My name is Jan Balbaligo and I design and build structures that are sustainable and less harmful to the environment. Some people say to me, Jan, how have you been able to do what you do with no clear pathway to follow or no company to guide you? Well, I did what I felt was right. I had an interest and I followed my heart. I have spent 15 years on projects traveling, learning, training and building because I knew that there was another way to construct in the world. It was something that I didn't learn in university as everything happened when I left. I'm here to tell you what I did, how I did it and why I think you should do the same. I started an architecture school in 2005 with very big ambitions to make magnificent buildings that would have an impact on the world and hopefully one day make my legacy. This is far from what my ambitions are now. In fact, it is the opposite. From early on, I was faced with the truth that architecture school is a brutal place for an 18 or 19 year old because you quickly discover that learning is sitting at the table, slaving away at a drawing for days or weeks or designing a project in a very isolating and competitive environment. My tutors hated me at school. I argued back in my crits. I stuck up for myself and my ideas because my work was not on dazzling sheets of A0 paper with intricate lines like everyone else's. So from my very year, first year at university, I knew I was gonna have a problem with the conventional way of learning. I heard a quote that once said, university doesn't teach you what you will do in your profession. University teaches you how to study, which is true. And though I cannot say all negative things about traditional education, because I gain skills and knowledge from studying at highly regarded institutions, and actually I'm doing my part three, I went on a quest to be self-taught because I'm a firm believer that doing is knowing. The first live project I participated in was to build a living bridge in a gypsum valley surrounded by mountains in southern Spain. The second was a pavilion structure for a music festival in Portugal. Both were made using a plant called caña, which is similar to sugarcane and it has a hollow centre running throughout. It grows abundantly around rivers and sources of water. Needless to say, I became fascinated with the whole process of how a structure came together using techniques completely new to me. It starts from harvesting, cleaning the leaves and husks, sorting, storing and combining the canes. Even the material that held it together was made from grass. It wasn't easy to build and it wasn't fast but I was captivated by working in the middle of nature, being so close to the elements in all the hours of the day. I believe it was the beginning of something aligning inside of me as I began to imagine if we could make more structures like these common. A few years later, I started to work with another material that would take control over my life, a plant so surprising and remarkable that it led me down a path that I never imagined I would go down. And that material was bamboo. I had seen it in my childhood when I went on the holiday to the Philippines and I noticed it being used to make small houses, furniture, hats and little crafts. Yet it was only when I started to go down and discover about it more that the potential blew my mind of how it could be used in modern day building construction. A famous Japanese philosopher, Matsubashu said, learn about a pine tree from a pine tree, learn about bamboo from a bamboo. And that is exactly what I did. So how did I do it? I became part of teams which built stages and structures at musical events and festivals because they were perfect platforms to test interesting designs for open-minded clients who had budgets. These projects took me around the world and to amazing countries such as Brazil, Panama, Portugal, Guatemala and the United States. 
Either the bamboo was there on site, so local bamboo, or we brought it with us in trucks and trailers. We made columns and components, building up shade structures so fast because the material was pretty light and we could do anything that we wanted to. I trained under different bamboo masters and made the best friends and memories of my life. It's always a process of learning as you are doing, making mistakes and coming up with solutions in the moment. I started to design my own structures, which was quite scary, but I had friends and talented crew members to work with so we could solve the problems together. Every single person has always contributed to the projects in their own special way, which is the reason why I love building today. Now I have moved away from temporary structures and I'm trying my hand at building permanent ones that are small and special. For example, I designed a little bamboo house in the Philippines and a primary school in Guatemala. Let me tell you some bamboo facts. Cause, because bamboo actually has superpowers. A bamboo grove can release 35% more oxygen compared to that of trees. So to put that into context, if I plant a bamboo, an acre of bamboo here and an acre of oak there, it will produce 35% more oxygen in this bamboo area than the other. Not to mention the rate it will absorb carbon dioxide, which will be much faster. It can be harvested in four to five years of, compared to that of oak, which may take 80 years to grow and therefore be ready to be harvested. And what about bamboo in construction? Bamboo has a stronger tensile strength than steel and a stronger compressive strength compared to concrete. This is because of the structural buildup of vascular bundles which are compacted tightly and this is the way how bamboo was intelligently designed by nature. Innovative products are being manufactured using their natural properties developed with engineers and technicians to create boards, floors, beams and panels. You must believe that anything can be made from it. So, have I sold it to you? Are you convinced about bamboo? I ask you this question. Why are things made with the materials that they are made from? Well, there are many reasons. Because it is strong or light, it is durable, it looks good, or is fit for purpose. The most common reason, however, is because it is cheap. And we know that cheap things are costing us our planet. The way we make everyday items, the way we build our houses, our workplaces, the infrastructure of our towns, it is having a direct impact to the environment. Let's discuss carbon emissions. Did you know that if we look at the industries today that contribute to the world's carbon emissions, 35% is from energy production, the burning of fossil fuels, coal, oil and natural gas. The second is the agricultural industry at 24%, livestock raising, meat farming and clearing the forest. The third industry which contributes to the world's highest carbon emissions is the industrial and building industry, amounting to 21%. This is for all types of constructions, manufacturing, and it also includes mining. We build our countries by polluting the atmosphere knowingly, and all developing countries are continuing to build like this on a downward trajectory. Behind the three is the transport industry, bringing goods and products and people from around the world by planes, roads and ships. And finally, the commercial industry, such as heating, lighting and cooling our buildings. It is quite absurd. So what can we do? Build everything from bamboo? Well, no, that's not the only solution, but it is a good one. What we need and what we need to do is to reimagine everything that is made to come from sustainable sources. We must use natural parameters of designs to become solutions to make buildings work for us, such as making the use of location, wind direction and cooling, using sunlight and sourcing labour and materials locally. We should reuse what we can and refuse when we must. We could make our home using traditional low-tech methods of construction, such as straw bales, rammed earth, adobe and cob. In fact, 
government should encourage the material of the future, which I predict is going to change the industry even more than bamboo. This is hempcrete. It is already being used in construction for products and clothing and much more. It is widely used in some countries, but in others it is still illegal to grow. I'd love to tell you more about the super plant, but that's another TED talk. Like bamboo, we too have superpowers. What are our superpowers, you ask? We have the power of choice. We can choose to say yes or no. Let's use this. Let's not use that. I support this wholeheartedly. I reject that completely. Our second superpower is the power of imagination. Throughout the history of mankind, we have come up with the most incredible inventions, technologies and systems to enhance our lives and make it better and easier. But we need to imagine more important things now, which is how to work with nature and not against it. It is a war that we are losing and soon we are going to fail. At the beginning of this talk, I said I was going to tell you what I did, why I did it and why I think you should do the same. I would like to transmit another message. I followed my path because I was searching for an alternative way to do things. And as a result, I have found the most powerful cause that I can get behind, which is becoming an ambassador of nature. Louis Kahn said, every brick wants to be something. I think this is the same for people. Everyone has a mission that they have to, that they have to follow. So listen to your heart and be who you'd like to be. And I'm going to end with one final quote by Mick Pierce, who is a bio-architect and a very intelligent man. He said, What ends up happening is the green movement ends up changing architecture. And this is exactly what is happening right now. It is in our hands. Our generation and every generation needs to change what we're doing. And the most important thing that we must fight for is to fight for climate change. Thank you.